In this video, I am going to show you how you can use the NCOG Neural Network Framework with your graphics card. Using your graphics card to actually do some of the processing for the neural network. Neural networks are mathematically intense. So is graphics programming, th the 3D sort of things that you see in video games. So you can actually execute mathematically intense code on your GPU and sometimes it will actually be faster than your CPU especially if you have a very fast graphics processing card, a high-end card. Additionally you can have both the CPU and the GPU training at once and that will allow you to train two neural networks much faster than if you would have had to have had the CPU train them one at a time. Here you see the NCOG OpenCL Benchmark 1.0. This is used to benchmark GPUs. Now the GPU that I'm using here is a GTS 240. It's not a particularly high-end card. It came with the, this computer that I purchased about a year ago. It's good enough for playing most video games, not that I play a lot of video games, but for my needs it, it works quite well. However, for calculating neural networks, it's a good example of a low-end calculation card. I'm going to select it here and you can see all of the stats about it. You can also upload these stats to heatandresearch.com after you've run a benchmark and that adds it to our growing library of OpenCL stats for graphics cards. Now OpenCL is just a standard way of executing code on a graphics card for computation purposes. Now I'm going to go ahead and perform a benchmark here. I'm going to click perform benchmark and you can see that it's starting the benchmark here. It informs me of that and the code is now going through several iterations. I've requested 100 iterations of a neural network with 10 input neurons, 20 hidden layer 1, 5 hidden layer 2, and 1 output neuron. We're going through 100,000 training elements on each of these iterations. This is actually being trained on my GPU. If you were to look at my CPU stats, right now you can see that there's very very little CPU usage. This is probably mostly my recorder going on and it has it it's now finished. So that took no power whatsoever from the CPU so we could have been training a neural network on the CPU as well. Now the purpose of this application is you can adjust these performance ratios here to train, to try to optimize different neural network types. You can see how they perform. Now this neural network took 50 seconds to, to train. If I had adjusted these ratios, and there's more information on my website as far as what a global, a local segmentation ratio all of these guys actually are, but if I adjust these and the time goes down, obviously that was good for the size neural network that I was dealing with. And it's different for each size neural network. Mostly you want them to be ones. That's going to be your highest performance ratio. But what's going to happen is you may overtax your GPU. Your GPU, while it is quite capable of doing these marvelous calculations, it does have a day job. Its main task is driving your display. If you give it too much work to do, it will keep the GPU active for too long of a period of time. And while the GPU is processing the neural network, it can't respond to you. It, your computer is basically locked up. Now, it comes back after each iteration. That's why we are able to see the iteration count here, and my computer was not locked up during those 50 seconds. But if you create too advanced of a neural network, and I'm going to do that now. I hope this actually works on my recording. I'm going to try to actually crash the GPU while I'm recording. We'll see how that actually works. I am creating a neural network here that has 200 neurons in each of the layers. 
that's a fairly large neural network. It's not unreasonable, it can be done, but it's going to cause the GPU to go idle for too long. Your very helpful Windows 7 and Windows Vista both do this. Operating system will detect that your GPU has gone idle. It's going to think that it crashed and it's going to reboot your GPU, just the GPU, not the entire computer. And not to pick on Windows too much, Mac does exactly the same thing. The operating systems are really not used to the GPU going off into a seemingly idle mode while it does a lengthy computation. So let me go ahead and perform the benchmark. Now watch down here near my clock. If this actually works, you're going to see Windows inform you that the GPU had a problem, or at least Windows thought it had a problem. Okay, I'm going to perform the benchmark, and it's running. The computer is unresponsive and there the screen went completely dark and there is the little screen saying, telling me, the little window telling me that my NVIDIA Windows kernel driver version 2.58 has stopped responding and was successfully recovered. There was really no problem. Windows just sort of jumped the gun on my GPU training. I mean the computer was locked up legitimately there but it would have come back after training was done. Now if you want to train neural networks for long periods of time, you'll need to disable that. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But you see the workbench or the benchmark utility has told you that the GPU card has reported that it's out of resources. It's a pretty lame error that GPUs give you back. They always say out of resources. It can mean many different things. But usually what it means is the operating system has timed you out, or you've asked for some very, very large block of memory that the GPU is not going to provide. The GPUs, most modern ones, have a gigabyte or more of, date, of RAM available to them so they can hold these bigger neural networks. Okay, that is the error that you saw as a result of of the neural network taking too long. Let me show you how you can fix this. If you run regedit, you can't see this, it's happening on the other side of my screen, but I basically click start and then run and I'm running regedit, -E -E regedit. Windows is now nor warning me that this is a dangerous program and it is, but I know what I'm doing with regedit. So what we do with regedit, and there's more instructions on how to do this on my, on my website, but basically you want to go down to H key local machine, then you want to go to system, then you want to go to current control set, then you want to go to control, and you want to scroll down further and go to graphics drivers, and this value that you see right here, this TDR level, it's set to 3 and that's the default value. You most likely do not have a, one of these values here. You probably just have default and this um, kernel version here. You may very well need to add the TDR level and you do that just by right clicking and creating a new D word value and it's capital T lowercase d r l e capital L for level no space and you'll want to set that to zero. Setting it to zero will disable the operating system from rebooting your graphics card just because it's taken too long. Now I don't know that I necessarily recommend running your computer like this all the time. If you set your neural network off on some very long training process where you will not be able to get control of it, if your neural network never converges or just does not come back from training, you're going to be reaching for the power button to restart your computer after this. So, and also once you've changed it, you will have to reboot the computer. Now I can't keep recording through a reboot, that is not going to work. I was amazed enough just to see that I could record through a, through a GPU reboot from the operating system. But after you've rebooted, you would be able to run the benchmark with that very large neural network. Now your computer's going to get really unresponsive while you do it, but it will actually work. 
Well, this is uh, just an introduction on using the GPU with training a neural network and some of the stuff that can go wrong as a result. You'll need to make sure that you have your OpenCL drivers installed for this. Usually if you have the latest version of your, of your GPU drivers in there, hopefully it comes with a OpenCL driver. The NVIDIA ones usually do. So this concludes this video. Thank you.